Welcome to NCIX Tech Tips. Today's format is going to be a little bit different. First of all, we've moved the set slightly to the right, or my left. Okay, so that's different. And second of all, I'm not going to be holding any products or really showing you guys anything. Today's video is all going to be about a concept, and that is the concept of future-proofing. So we're going to cover things that are future-proof, things that are not future-proof, things that you can do to be more future-proof, and things where there's just nothing you can do to be future-proof. So we're going to cover sort of all of the aspects of this concept that everyone talks about, but nobody really seems to understand. So let's start with things that are not future-proof. The first example of something that is completely not future-proof is cheaping out on some aspect of a new system that you're building with the intention of upgrading it later. A hundred times out of a hundred, if you're buying a new system kind of in the, and you're trying to squeeze it into a budget like 500, 600 bucks, and you want to play games or you want to do something intensive like video editing, you're probably cheaping out on something that you shouldn't and you're going to run into a situation where by buying something cheaper now and then upgrading it later would have actually been more expensive than just buying what you needed in the first place. So that is one of the ways that you can really shoehorn yourself into a low-end basic configuration where really by the time you can afford to upgrade it the standards have changed it's become more expensive to upgrade it than to just buy something new and then you're in a real mess so it goes back to our bottleneck episode where i talked about how the best thing to do every time is to buy a balanced configuration with parts that are all appropriate for each other versus trying to squeeze into a budget in order to intend to upgrade it later and blah, just not good so let's cover the next thing that's not future proof Super premium components like video cards, motherboards, uh, gaming type components are not future proof. Now, yes, they will last longer in the sense that they will perform at that level, which will remain acceptable for longer, but in terms of the actual cost to performance ratio, you're not getting more of a future out of it versus if you just bought two systems, one now and one two years down the road, that each cost half of what you would have paid for, say, for example, a $5,000 machine. Now, that's not to say that there's no justification for buying an expensive machine. I personally own a very expensive computer, but the justification should be the performance you want now, not future-proofness. So here's a perfect example. 99 times out of 100, nobody buys an SLI ready configuration and then actually adds another graphics card to it. It usually doesn't make sense. Usually it makes way more sense because unless you're going to upgrade it like a couple weeks down the line when you get your next paycheck or like a month later, then it makes sense. But if you intend to actually wait for the next generation of graphics cards to come out, it usually is better to just sell off your old one and buy a new one because the performance changes so dramatically. Here's another example. Super expensive motherboards that are based on the same chipset as a less expensive one. They both support the same standards, you know, say for example DDR3 RAM, SATA 6, USB 3. So what's more future proof? Well, it's faster now, you can overclock it more now, but that doesn't really help you in terms of the future. We're talking about a finite life cycle for both of those two things, no matter how you look at it. The final thing on my, mind you, not entirely comprehensive list of things that are completely not future-proof is storage. So I'm talking storage in a sort of a broader context, so I mean RAM, which is not really storage, SSDs, hard drives, things that are rapidly depreciating in value and at the same time rapidly appreciating in size. So for something like memory, I almost never recommend to someone, you know, spend quadruple now to get twice as much memory so that it's more future-proof because 99 times out of 100, you're far better off to just buy half as much now and then double later when that actually ends up costing the same. And you spend less money overall and there's no perceivable difference because by the time you need the more RAM, you can just buy more RAM. If you need more RAM now, buy more RAM. But I don't usually recommend, same thing for hard drive, spending a super premium to get the top of the line capacity now when you're probably just going to grow into it and you could buy one now and then one a couple years down the line when you need it and actually end up with more storage space overall. 
One small exception to that is when we're talking about standards that are about to go EOL, such as DDR2 or IDE hard drives. Those, instead of the capacities going up and then they start to get cheaper and cheaper and cheaper, you actually run into a situation where those ones get more and more expensive as they get closer and closer to being completely not available anymore. So if you're investing in an older standard, then I would definitely recommend buying all that you could possibly need now before the price goes up. That's the one exception. Here's another thing I'd consider future-proof. Case, power supply, to a lesser extent, as well as cooling, again, to a lesser extent. A case, personally, I have no problem investing 400 bucks in a case. Why? Because I've actually had at least a dozen separate builds in my Silverstone TJ07. Why not? A case is an art piece. It's depending where it's gonna be. I mean, if it's gonna be in like your basement in a corner with like Cheeto stains on it, then yeah, don't invest a lot in a case. But if you're gonna have it in your living room, cause that's where your family PC is, well, hey, why not buy a really nice case, get a nice aluminum case? Hey, there's an example, aluminum. It's never gonna go down, metals keep going up, so it's not like you're gonna be able to buy something really nice for cheaper in the future. You might as well get something nice now. Power supply, again, to a lesser extent, because that technology does continue to evolve. We've got better efficiency, we've got more silent power supplies now, but if you overbuy on your power supply, it can last you at least two builds. So if you get 1,000 watts when actually you could have gotten by with a 650 watt, well, maybe you can reuse it next time. You've saved yourself money in the long haul. And yet another one is cooling. Lots of manufacturers, and you can find out who does and who doesn't quite easily, will actually update their coolers with future mounting socket so that even if you upgrade your PC you can buy a six dollar adapter instead of a brand new cooler. For example, my radiator that I use in my home PC, my Black Ice uh, Stealth 240, I actually bought that like three and a half, four years ago and I still use it to this day. Now here's the big key to future proofing and why nobody can answer the question of how future proof is my system? How long is it going to last? Nobody can answer that for you because it comes down to your expectations. If you buy a system, you're expecting to run it 2560 by 1600 max HD plus resolution. You buy something with two GTX 580 graphics cards, Extreme Edition processor, and you go, how future proof is this? Well, that answer varies. That system, if you're going to use it for spreadsheets, is very future proof. It will likely last forever. However, if you're going to use that system, in the aforementioned example where you're running it at super high-end games, if you're going to play all the same games forever, it's very future-proof. But if you're expecting to keep upgrading your game library and buy all the latest titles, well, it's not very future-proof because, yeah, you're going to be able to play all the latest titles, but you're not going to be able to play them at that resolution with full-on anti-aliasing and all that kind of stuff. So depending on how you expect to use your computer, a system configuration is more or less future-proof, and you have to bear that in mind that if you get accustomed to a certain standard of gameplay or standard of performance in video editing or video rendering or whatever it is that you're doing, then you're going to have to factor that in to how future-proof your build is. So I'm sorry for the long lecture style video, but uh, there wasn't really a prop that I could easily think of that would really help me demonstrate this point. So in conclusion, buy what you need when you need it, Keep your expectations realistic and you won't run into any problems. Anyone who is selling you a computer or a computer component that says, well, yes, I estimate that this video card will remain top of the line for three years and will run any future games at this resolution. Unless they're, you know, wearing a bandana and they have a crystal ball in front of them and they're in like one of those little booths where you put in 25 cents to, you know, hear your fortune, uh, they're probably making things up. So nobody knows what's going to happen with the technology industry. That's the reality of it. And future proofing is not real. So our question at the end of the episode today is, has this video changed your perception of future proofing? That's part one of the question. Part two of the question is, what rig would you build today? that would be, in your opinion, the most future-proof. So I want you to list the key components, like CPU, how much RAM, uh, video card, power supply, and whatever else you feel is necessary. And then last but not least, would you like to see more episodes like this, or would you like us to stick to more like what we do other than this? 
Thank you for checking out NCIX Tech Tips, and don't forget to subscribe for lots more great technology content.